seven prerequisites that you need to look at and in the process for dealing with misconduct. Think of it as your to-do list. The first thing you're going to do is analyze the issue and the problem. Analyze that problem. And once you determine that it is indeed a conduct problem, then you need to investigate. And you're going to conduct an investigation just like you would have a criminal investigator or your law enforcement person do some type of an investigation. You've received an allegation from an employee in the organization that one of your employees has done something wrong. Right now, that's all you know. So you need to investigate that to find out all of those, you know, who, what, when, where questions. Who witnessed it? Did anyone else witness it? What actually happened? When did it happen? Where did it happen? How did the event or the situation occur? Why did it happen and who was accountable? Now, not every single one of those questions is going to apply in every circumstance, but you want to make sure that you're getting all of that information. You're gathering that through interviews, through talking with any of the people that are involved, um, and you're, you definitely want to talk to Susie. Don't just talk to the timekeeper and assume that what she told you was correct. You need to talk to Susie. Did she really do that? And if she did, why did she do it? So you want to make sure that you're finding out all of those things. Um, and then the most important part of your investigation is that you are documenting your findings. And don't do it tomorrow. Don't do it the next day. After, as you are interviewing, or right after you finish your interview, take notes. Make sure you write it down. I can almost guarantee you that you will not remember the details of that interview if you don't do it right away. Um, that's the voice of experience speaking, because I used to think I had a photographic memory and I could do that. And uh, clearly, I don't. Not many of us do. And the third thing that you want to be aware of, um, that you want to make sure you know, is if your employees are covered by a union. Because if they are, they're entitled to union representation. Now, there's not too many of our locations um, throughout the department, really, certainly not in the Park Service, that are covered by unions. So we're not going to spend a lot of time on this. Um, if, indeed, you're covered by a union, you, need, you should always have a copy of your union contract. And you want to, again, make sure you're working with your human resources or labor relations folks to make sure because the procedure for proceeding from this point and interviewing your employee might be a little bit different. So be sure you check that. Um, we're not going to go into that, but if you have a question, just pipe right on up and we'll talk about it, OK? Um, the fourth thing is that you need to make sure that the employee knows the rules, regulations, and policies associated with whatever they have done wrong. Um, if you believe they've done something wrong, then you need to make sure that there is a rule or policy that covers that. Now, that does not mean that every single thing that you're doing or that you do has to have a rule associated with it. Um, some things that employees do are so obviously wrong that um, you know, you're not gonna, it's not going to be in writing anywhere. Let's say that you have a, um, an employee that punches a coworker uh, in the workplace. Probably you don't have a policy that outlines that very clearly, that says specifically that employees can't hit each other. But clearly, that is unacceptable conduct, and you can certainly deal with that through the disciplinary process. So you're not going to have everything. It's something that an employee would obviously know. Now, you have to make sure that you've communicated this, obviously, to employees through a variety of, of different reasons. You need to make sure that these rules have been communicated and enforced consistently. Now, these are two really big ones. Um, it, I think some of the biggest issues that we have in dealing with misconduct is that we don't talk to each other enough. Um, supervisors are pretty certain that they've communicated the rules, um, and employees are pretty certain that they've never heard that before. You never told me that. Um, so. It's, good, it's a good idea as a supervisor that you make sure that you have developed some kind of a method to assure that your employees know that information. Now, maybe you post policies on a bulletin board. Maybe you have a three-ring binder somewhere that's accessible to all employees. Maybe you have um, a shared network drive on the internet that contains all of your policies. Um, 
Maybe you have an orientation session that you communicate all of those policies. Um, it's just important to make sure that you do it somehow. One of the things that we did um, in a couple of parks that I've been at, I can't take credit for the idea, but I thought it was a really good one. Actually, one of our supervisors came up with it. You know, there's a lot of um, department-wide policies for harassment, um, sexual misconduct, uh, violence in the workplace, EO, safety, all of those kinds of things that everybody deals with, and, you, and there's a written policy for all of those things. We developed a little uh, checklist that we actually attach to our performance appraisals. And every year, when the performance plan is com uh, communicated to the employees, they use that checklist and make sure employees are reminded that, the, that they have those policies and that they're out there. Now, I'm not contradicting myself. Um, it is a conduct issue, and it doesn't have anything to do with performance. But we just try, it's a good idea because it's a good place to do it, because you kn we know that you're always going to talk to your employees at least once or twice a year, three times a year, w in the performance plan. So it's just kind of a good idea to do that. The next um, issue, uh, prerequisite, is that you need to determine the, that the connection between the misconduct and the efficiency of the service. Now remember, that's one that we talked about early on. It's one of the three most important, actually those are two of the three most important things that you need to establish in any disciplinary action. You want to make sure that there is a connection. How does whatever the employee did wrong affect the agency, affect the employee at work? What if it happened off duty? Now, a couple of examples I'll just briefly talk about. Um, what if you have a, a law enforcement officer maybe that had a drug possession of marijuana charge? Um, and conviction. Probably pretty serious, probably a pretty serious connection to their job since they're set out to enforce those laws. Um, our fighting, uh, one that we talked about earlier that maybe there isn't a written policy, but um, it definitely, it occurred after hours. It was in a bar downtown. Is there a connection there? Kind of keep that one in mind. We'll talk a little bit more about that one as we move through our course. And then the last thing that you need to decide is, do you have enough information and is there enough, uh, enough evidence and enough intent to decide whether you want to take a disciplinary action or not? 